Her literal landscape dotted by dozens of peacocks raised on her family's farm, Flannery O'Connor filled her literary landscape with stories of fervent true believers, ingrained white supremacy, rampant psychopathology, and the peculiarly comic dark forces she saw and dramatized until her death at age 39. O'Connor, the author of Wise Blood, the career-making short story collection, A Good Man is Hard to Find, and a wealth of closely examined correspondence, died in 1964 in her hometown of Milledgeville, Ga. The cause of death was lupus. Lupus also took the life of her beloved father and led to O'Connor using crutches for much of her devout Catholic life. I have enough energy to write with, she wrote in one letter, and as that is all I have any business doing anyhow, I can with one eye squinted take it all as a blessing. From day one, says Kaufman, Loyola University associate professor in the School of Communication. The goal was always, American masters. That, and having more people reading her fiction. Some documentaries gel relatively quickly. Flannery, took a decade. In 2011, Kaufman's fellow Loyola professor Mark Bosco organized a literary conference dedicated to O'Connor's life, works and legacy. Bosco, a Jesuit priest, is now vice president for mission and ministry at Georgetown University. He asked Kaufman, a filmmaker as well as an educator, to film interviews with various conference participants. At the time, Bosco mentioned to Kaufman something about a documentary. He mentioned roughly 15 hours of unused footage he obtained, through a mutual friend. The early interviews, conducted for a never-completed project, dated back to the late 1990s, and included O'Connor's friend and editor Sally Fitzgerald and publisher Bob Giroux. Kaufman says she was hesitant at first about tackling an O'Connor documentary. Then I took a look at the interviews Mark had inherited. That led to a fresh round of interviews, with Bosco contacting various literary figures, notably Alice Walker, The Color Purple, and critic and essayist Hilton Alves, White Girls. Bosco and Kaufman filmed O'Connor family friends, various scholars and authors, among them, Tobias Wolfe, and secured some time with longtime O'Connor fan Tommy Lee Jones. Crucially, says Kaufman, Flannery secured a $150,000 production grant from the National Endowment for the Humanities and, more recently, the first ever $200,000 Library of Congress Levine, Ken Burns Prize. Completion funds set, Mary Steenburgen recorded the voiceovers. The work, says Kaufman, was managed in between Loyola commitments, over weekends and summers and holidays, though she adds, chuckling, that, I suppose I had a hard time letting it go. That's probably a problem I have. The result is a thoroughly Chicago effort. Kaufman's partner in work and in life, Columbia College Cinema and Television professor Ted Hardin, served as cinematographer and associate producer.